Let's take a closer look at the unique Porsche 919 engine. Again, because since my last video there have been some developments. In the meantime, I was able to contact some senior engineers and former managers of the 919 project and there are some updates I want to share with you to fully understand this complex engine. Like I said in the first part, it took me pretty long time to understand this engine because it's so unusual and complex. And also because details were kept secret for so long. And now, after researching longer and speaking to Porsche engineers, I realized that it's even more complex. So, like you heard in the first part, Porsche designed this engine and had massive problems with vibrations in the first test. They then changed the firing order which required redesigning crankshaft and cams. After the project finished, we could see detailed pictures of engine parts, although Porsche tried even here to confuse nosy engineers. So, there are two possibilities for a crankshaft design on a V4 engine. You can either have a crossplane or an L-shaped crankshaft. For each one of them, you can have a number of different firing orders. So my initial thinking was that Porsche surely started off with a crossplane crank and just changed to another crossplane with different firing order to cure their vibration problems. Because an L-shaped crankshaft would definitely create vibration problems. And they would not have chosen that. But as it was confirmed to me now, Porsche did exactly that. They started the project with an L-shaped crankshaft. So let's take a look how this works. In this graphic you can see the engine in front view with the two cylinder heads. In the top right corner you see the engine in top view. Note the strange positions of cylinders here, as cylinder 3 is the first one, cylinder 2 the last one. For more info on that, check out part 1 about the 919 engine. At the bottom right corner we see the crankshaft with 5 bearings. So at 0 degree we start with an ignition in cylinder 1. Because it's a 4 stroke engine, we need 720 degree for 4 strokes and since we have 4 cylinders, we divide 720 degree by 4. So 180 degree later we should have the next ignition. We now want to fire a cylinder on bank 2 and have two possibilities. In order to spread load evenly across the engine, we decide to fire cylinder 4 next. Another 180 degree later we fire a cylinder on bank 1 again. And then the only one available is cylinder 2, because cylinder 1 just fired 360 degree ago. And 180 degree later we fire the remaining cylinder 3. So a possible firing order for this L-shaped crankshaft and firing in a cross pattern is 1, 4, 2, 3. So this is how they started their 919 project and they simply couldn't balance the L-shaped crankshaft. And as we guessed right in the previous part, it was now confirmed to me that they then redesigned the engine to a cross-plane crankshaft. And here we could see pictures of the disassembled engine which confirmed that. We can see the crankshaft where Porsche swept the positions of the pistons to confuse anyone who tries to understand this engine, but not with us. We can clearly see how for a clockwise rotation, if you look from the front, after cylinder 1, follow the crankshaft for 4, 2 and 3. If we now put that in our simplified graphic, we see a cross-plane crankshaft where cranks are positioned in a clockwise rotation with 1, 4, 2, 3. With this crankshaft we can now work out the firing order. We start with cylinder 1 and 180 degree later we could ignite either cylinder 2 or 4. We now decide for cylinder 2 and again 180 degree later we can only ignite cylinder 3 because cylinder 1 just fired 360 degree ago. And the last one, 180 degree later, is cylinder 4. So the firing order is 1, 2, 3, 4. So they fire both cylinders on one bank first and then both cylinders on the other bank. To confirm this, we can check the camshafts. On a normal engine with a cam belt or chain, camshafts always rotate in the same direction as a crankshaft. But of course, not here. And that was one detail I overlooked last time. So if you drive camshafts with gears, it depends on the number of gears if your camshafts rotate in the same direction or not. For uneven numbers of gears, it rotates the same direction. But if we look at the Porsche engine, we can see a small gear on the crankshaft, two large gears with the same size in between and two smaller wheels for the camshafts again. So from crank to camshaft, it's an even number and hence camshafts rotate in the opposite direction, which doesn't really help if you want to understand this engine. 
If you want to design such a gear drive, it's of course important that camshafts rotate with half the speed of the crankshaft since it's a four-stroke engine. But it doesn't really matter how many teeth the gears in between have and how many there are, since the overall ratio stays the same, just the direction can change. Okay, so since we know that now, we can have a look at the camshafts again. And we see that on bank 1, the cams of cylinder 1 come first, and then 90 degree later, cylinder 2. On bank 2, we can see that cylinder 3 fires first, and then cylinder 4. And that confirms our firing order of 1, 2, 3, 4. So this engine is really a very special design, and one which generated huge success for Porsche. But you could see here that also they faced huge challenges at the very beginning and it took them lots of work to turn things around. This engine will stay a legend and I hope you understand it a bit better now. See you at the next video and if you want to learn how to design combustion engines from 1 to 16 cylinders, check out my new Udemy design course with the link below. See you at the next one.